again YouTube, Mad Dog here. I thought I'd quickly show you a little trap of mine. Uh, I call this the uh, picture frame trap. It's a guillotine, sprung loaded guillotine trap. Very simple in construction, quite effective, dead easy to make this one. So the whole thing is basically made out of strips of half inch plywood or something similar. These are all approximately 12 inches long. You can size this up or down as big or small as you as you choose to depending on the type of quarry that you're trying to catch with this trap um, so basically I'll show you around the construction I've got two pieces of that half inch plywood nailed together screwed or nailed whatever for the top the same for the bottom so two pieces of the same thickness together and then onto the onto the front I've simply nailed or, or screwed again two single pieces vertically front and back so basically you've made a picture frame with a hole in the centre and into the centre I've put another piece of the same single thickness plywood which can float up and down basically that becomes the guillotine and obviously it's powered by these elastic bands around the ends you could use bungee cords whatever you've got so Another little point is, whilst I'm here, I've put on the back here, I don't know if this will pick up, a, an old copper coin, bent at 90 degrees, and just tack, roughly tacked into place. And that, that forms a nice radius um, corner, if that makes sense, so that it's very slippy, very twitchy on the trigger, when the trigger stick goes in there. So it becomes, you know, uh, like a hair trigger, very sensitive. You could use plastic or whatever you've got. Or nothing at all it's not necessary but it does make it a lot more sensitive on the trigger mechanism the side pieces the little struts they're just for basically so I can stand it up so I can stand it up whilst I'm demonstrating this thing like I say you can make this as big or as small as you like depending on the type of quarry you intend to catch now finally you'll need a trigger stick In this case just a piece of garden cane nice thin stick and uh, we're ready to set the trap so you've got to be careful with this one because trust me I have had one or two knuckle wrappers with this <laughs> it, it does come down with quite a, a fearsome wallop so do take your time and be careful with this Oop, he says <laughs> mm, dear. So it goes here. Try and line that up a bit more central if I can. That way. Okay. So the trap is set. As you can see, I'm just showing this so that you can see the side profile of that wood is actually leaning. That stops it getting wedged and also allows the bait stick to fly out rather than it being driven down and getting wedged and stopping the guillotine from fully closing so that's basically it obviously now you would place that in a known run <coughs> you know an area that is a, a, an established animal trail <coughs> try and tunnel the sides in as best as you can and put some obstacles, rocks, logs, whatever at the back of the trap because this is directional we want the animal the creature the victim whatever to come in this way over that threshold taking the bait off the bait stick which obviously you would apply on the bait stick whether it be nuts berries peanut butter whatever and um, enjoy its last meal <laughs> so this this type of trap this size of trap is perfectly fine for catching small vermin you know rats mice voles that type of thing it's deceptively effective it, although it looks like a piece of junk, which it is, it is very effective. I would also add, this is where I always smash my fingers, that the trigger stick needs to be set as close to that radius coin edge as you can to make it as sensitive as you can. And um, that's set. I'll try and do this without smashing my fingers yet again. I mean, if you was going to create a safety net with two bits of hooped wire on this so it can't go off whilst you're setting it then I dare say you could put some steel across the guillotine or whatever just to make it more brutal but 
I don't recommend it for your own safety without setting this. So anyway, here comes our little creature after his peanut butter or whatever and he's having to nibble away and bang, he's gone. And as you can see it does come down with quite a wallop for saying it's only powered by elastic bands. I'll just try and reset this, give you one more quick demo. I didn't set that trigger stick as, as um, sensitive as you can get it. But also, that being said, I don't want to smash my knuckles yet again. <laughs> Which I've done several times with this. So, if you're going to try this, be warned. <laughs> it probably will bite you at some point. So here we go again. Bang. Game over. So, I hope you find some of these little ideas useful. You know, and don't forget, please also don't forget that when experimenting with traps, when you're finished, put them in a safe condition, move them away, never leave sat, uh, uh, traps set. They are indiscriminate, you know, and depending on the size and scale of your trap, you could, you could catch an animal that you don't intend to, so be mindful and respectful of that, please. But build one, have a go. They're dead easy to construct, as you can see might be worth making some sort of a trigger plate mechanism or improving that twitchy stick uh, trigger mechanism have an experiment see what you all think and um, thank you all very much for watching as always so uh, thanks for joining my daft little projects like this I appreciate it take care out there until the next one Mad Dog signing off yeah